Hey, you're in the garage with Vic Ferrari, the sand rail, and a 44 Weber carburetor. What I want to show you today is how this choke works. Okay, so let's jump into it. So this choke mounts on the side, your cable comes in, the housing gets crimped, and your cable hooks here. And as it pulls, it opens and shuts these. You can see how it would lift it up and then it'll close when you go back. This has a spring on top of it. Okay, I'm going to lay it out here so you can see it. I want to be very careful that you do not lose any of these pieces because they're not easy to find. So it's going to be like this, a locking ring a spring holder is all that is it also has a hole in it for air inlet and then a spring and that all sits right in here there's your locking ring there's your spring holder and then under here you've got this piston Let me get it out of there for you. If you're going to remove this piston, you're going to want to take a tool, stick it right in that slot there, right in that groove. Don't bend this. Make sure you're in that and then just tap the end upward and it will pop that locking ring off. Now here's the thing. You better have your hand here or a towel or something because that's going to shoot and you're going to lose all of it. Okay, so as soon as it pops, just let the pressure off, take the spring and everything out. Now before I lose mine, I'm going to put them away. Here's how you should lay out all your stuff. Lay it out for, per side, you know. Each piece in line. There's your jets, or sorry, your idle mixture screws. There's your jets for each side, and uh, that way you don't lose nothing. Now let me explain to you real quick how this works. So when this is rotating, you can see those two little pins are lifting upward. Those are lifting up both those pistons. Down inside here, in this hole, you've got the piston closing off the air, and that air is coming from here. It's actually closing off the vacuum. So it's pulling a vacuum, pulling that vacuum up this to there. So then you have, at the bottom of your deal you've got a screen you've got your choke and in this area here it lets air into that so if you don't have a screen on there you're gonna get junk in there okay so when you turn on your choke it lifts this you can see it lifting it in there once it lifts that it does two things well three it lets air in from outside it also I got to get it out of there to show you this it also has a hole inside there you see that pinhole that pinhole feeds it air and gasoline that's already pre-mixed Okay, up on the top, you're going to see it's got a hole right here. When you close that choke, it lifts up and it blocks that hole. When that hole is open, this area cannot get vacuum. 
because it loses it right there to the outside right here, okay? The other thing is when it's down, it can't get vacuumed because that blocks support. But the reason you want to make sure you have no vacuum here is because if you draw here a vacuum, you're going to get fuel. Let me show you how that works. So right now, everything is in ambient air pressure balance. This port here, this hole, which goes to this tube, which jumps over to that one, which eventually meets up with that jet. And that jet at the bottom comes out the float right there. Okay, so let me show you that. At the bottom of the float, it pulls inward. Okay, this passage and this passage are not connected to that one. Okay, so this is drilled right into the float. It sucks fuel over to here which then gets metered by this jet right here. So let me pull that out. You will see that there's a jet on the end of that. Now you want to watch it that you don't get dirt and stuff in. So the fuel gets pulled by the vacuum coming from this. So when that port gets plugged by that shaft and this draws a vacuum on that pinhole that was inside there, it comes up and the vacuum jumps over to here, comes back down this diagonal tube there to the bottom of here where it creates a low vacuum area or a low pressure area, which is a vacuum and it will pull fuel through that tip and out these holes, which then will pass this shaft and will re-enter the system here. And that is an emulsion tube and it mixes the fuel and air. So right inside this tube, you're actually mixing fuel and air. Once that mixes, because the vacuum is being pulled up that diagonal tube there, it pulls air and fuel up this tube, goes back down that tube. It can't come out here because this is blocking it, so then it has to continue straight down a hole that is drilled all the way down to here. You can see it, if I go at an angle, well, it's actually this way. If I go this way, I'm gonna go right inside there. You can see that I'm in there, okay? See that? But if you plug that one, this one drops all the way down and ends up Let's actually see if we can see it. It ends up inside that hole. Yep, you can see it in there. There you go. So, when you open that, you get a vacuum up this, comes up this, it pulls on that pinhole which draws a vacuum on that, and this gets plugged off. That vacuum now draws on there, which creates a vacuum here, which is not only pulling air from the hole right there, but is also pulling fuel from the car or from the float here. Mixes with the fuel. The fuel and air travel up this diagonal tube, they go over, they go down, and air and fuel comes out that 
pinhole in there, okay? At which point it gets sucked into the engine. So now you have air and fuel. The reason you have this emuls, uh, this, uh, uh, jet and uh, emulsifier, um, emulsifier, Emo emulsion, to, I, oh, I got stuck anyway, doesn't matter. The reason you have that is because you need a 14.2 air to fuel ratio. You need 14.2 fuel and 85.8 air. So it gets it as close as it can here, and then here you get the rest of the air you need. So once you do that, it gives you a choke, and that is your choke circuit. I hope that helps.